All right, my friends, so let's close up with a study on your medical out-of-pocket expenditures once you hit retirement using that study from the Center for Retirement Research over at Boston College. So we showed you the introduction, we, and then we showed you methodology uh, in terms of the literature review as well uh, before. But now I want to show you their conclusion, the results. It's incredibly important. I, I, man, I tell you, this stuff is just it's fascinating, and it's, uh, it's very valuable to you. So don't forget the four S's. What are they? Subscribe, smash, share your comments, and of course, share the video. Or no, share, yeah, share the video, and then say the comments. I can't remember the four. All right, but anyway, let's go into this. It's uh, pretty good. So smash, <laughs> smash. All right, so here are the results. Medical out of pocket spending in 2014. The median retiree in the sample spent 3,681 on medical costs in 2014, and that year's dollars. And the average total out-of-pocket spending was $4,274. The difference implies that out-of-pocket spending is highly skewed. Indeed, spending at the 95th percentile is more than twice as large as spending at the mean. That means the average. I cannot stress this enough, my friends. Spending at the 95th percentile is twice as much as the mean, which simply says the higher the wealth of the quintile of uh, or I should say the wealthness, well, I guess it kind of is. We'll show you some of the charts, but the, the, the higher expenditures is skewing the amount on the averages because some people spend a heck of a lot of money. Not very many, but some people do. And that makes it seem like it's that much more prevalent in terms of your expenditures because they're seeing these, these outliers, probably 5% of the population who spend a mass amount of money on health care. The vast majority of us don't, but be, when you take these outliers and you throw them in the general population, it, it does begin to look a little bit uh, look dicey. But simply, if you remove those outliers, it's not nearly as bad. So that's why I like the median. I mean, 3681, that's essentially Medicare Part B, Part D, and your Medigap. Figure one also illustrates the premiums to comprise a substantial share of out-of-pocket of, out of costs for retirees. For the average retirees, premiums comprise of over two thirds of out of pocket coverage, and that's about twenty nine hundred bucks. Again, this is two thousand fourteen. While the remaining portion reflected other out of pocket costs, such as cost sharing and uh, and the full cost of uncovered services, and that'd be uh, you know deductibles and things of that nature. All right. For the average retiree, only sixty five point seven percent of their social security benefit remains after paying premiums and other out of pocket costs. For the median retiree, about 76% of their Social Security benefits remain. Hmm. However, out-of-pocket spending is more burdensome at the lower post-out-of-pocket income levels. Exactly. Exactly. The lower end of the income spectrum. Not the poor at the, at the Medicaid, but the lower end pay a substantial more of their income to Medicare out of, or medical out-of-pocket costs than do the the, uh, the most people for sure. So it's that lower end and that, you know, just 25th percentile that pay, that get hammered the most when it comes to their overall expenditures relative to the percentage of their social security benefit they get to re retain. So again, we're looking at how much of your social security income is being used to pay for a healthcare cost. How much of your total retirement income is being used to pay for healthcare costs. So if, if you take like a bell curve, most people, not that much, but that one population group, about the 25th percentile, that's a bulk of the, well, I don't say bulk, but the, the, they're the ones being burdened the most with out-of-pocket expenditures, for sure. The average retiree spends about one-fifth of his total income on medical costs, leaving only 82.2% available for non-medical spending. The median retiree has 88.6% of his total income left over, which matches almost exactly the consumer expenditure survey from the BLS. Um, and see, they, I don't get why they say only 82.2%. I mean, that's, you know, that's 18%. That's the average, the median, which is all that matters. But even if we use the average, you're still well over, well over 80% uh, of your income is remaining after healthcare costs. And so if, if that is, the biggest burden for retirees is the cost of health care. And even on the average or the median, you still have well over 80% of your income left. That doesn't seem like a huge burden to me. I know there are some people it is, but the median retiree has 88.6% of their total income left over after out-of-pocket costs. I just, I don't get the, I just, it's not, like I said, as I'm saying a million times, there's nothing compared to how much it costs for housing, food, and transportation. 
Uh, let's see. The portion of retirement income left over after out-of-pocket costs vary substantially across different groups of people. One of the more important distinctions is the type of supplemental insurance held by retirees. Yep. Medicaid enrollees have the highest share of total income remaining out-of-pocket expenditures, which is 89%. But again, they're not making much on Social Security to begin with, most likely. Now, if they are making a lot on Social Security because they're hiding their assets, that ticks me off. But if they're only making, you know, 10, 15,000 on Social Security and they're spending $3,000 on out-of-pocket, so they're left with 12,000 bucks, that I don't, that's not, uh, that doesn't bother me. It's the people who are making 50,000 Social Security or whatever, and they're uh, on Medicaid. I don't like that at all. Among those with re retirement health insurance, Medicare Advantage, and those with no supplemental insurance, the ranking of their post out of pocket expenses relative to Social Security income is surprising. Those with no supplemental insurance have the highest out of post out of pocket uh, Social Security ratio at 73%, which means if you have no supplemental coverage, you keep most of your money relative to your out-of-pocket costs and Social Security, which would only make sense because you don't have a supplemental policy, which is costing you another couple thousand a year. Uh, Medicare Advantage enrollees, in contrast, have only 67% of their Social Security income available for non-medical spending. And the post uh, out-of-pocket expense for rate respondents with retirement health care is lower, at only 47%. And these differences are due entirely to premiums. So retirement health care, most likely, or health insurance is going to have the highest premiums. Uh, respondents with retirement health insurance have much higher total income in retirement, 54000 and only about half of the average retirement health insurance's enrollee's income comes from Social Security. As a result, their post-out-of-pocket expense ratio increases to 79% when using all of their income as opposed to just Social Security income. Yep, could not agree that more. You got to use all their income. Don't just use Social Security. So let's see what else we've got down here that I highlighted. They talk about, all right. Uh, following Part D, the post out of pocket ratio increased by about 5 percentage points for Medicare only beneficiaries between 2004 and 2014, and 7 percentage points for Medicare Advantage. So basically, when Bush signed the uh, Medicare prescription drug coverage Part D, uh, retirees are able to retain about 5 to 7 percent more of their income from Social Security. That was good. I mean, that, that worked. You know, was it good in the overall scheme of things? I don't know. But I mean, in terms of retaining your income, it was. So let's look at some of these charts. I think the charts are pretty cool. And uh, like I said, this will be the final. So here we go. Medical out-of-pocket spending by spending types and percentiles. So we got the mean. That's the average. That's the median right there. So your out-of-pocket expenditures in the, ad, the median was about 3900 bucks, of which the vast majority was premiums. If you're in the 95th percentile or the 90th percentile, your expenditures are 10,000 and 8,500 roughly. And the bulk, about half was uh, was out of pocket costs, which could be co-pays, co-insurance, not just premium. So this is what happens here is that group of people is spending a lot more on health care costs, out of pocket expenditures, more than just premiums. And it's skewing the whole thing to make the mean look different than it really is. So here's the mean. Here's a median. The median is about 80 to 85 percent of the total expenditures are on premiums. And the mean, though, is about 60 percent of total expenditures are on premiums. And because of that's because these two groups are here, the 10 percent. And here's the uh, the folks that that class is talking about, the lower working class, lower middle class people. They're spending uh, about twenty two hundred on total out of pocket expenditures, the bulk on premiums. A uh, share of Social Security income remaining after medical out-of-pocket spending by percentile. Uh, the 75th percentile has 85% remaining. Here's that fifth percent right there. Share of Social Security remaining after uh, out-of-pocket expenditures. Uh, so that's 5% right there. That right there is an attendance. So this is going to skew it the other direction that they're getting a lot of their uh, I mean, literally, this is this. I mean, this is the outlier right here that they have less than ten, less than thirty, or about thirty percent right there of their Social Security out of uh, Social Security remaining after that they spend their out of pocket spending. But here's the median. All right, so the median is you take again fifty percent below, fifty percent above, and here is eighty about seventy eight percent. So uh, the median, which is again more. Uh, reflective of the population at large is about 78% of your social security benefit remains after uh, out-of-pocket spending. Now, if you uh, spending, now if you go to the mean, the average is about 65% or so. Here's a total income though, total income after medical out-of-pocket spending. 
Here is the median, 80, it's about, that's about 88% right there. If you're in the 75th percentile, it's about 90. And again, that fifth percentile right there, about 45% of their income is left after their out-of-pocket expenditures. So really, as these two people are the outliers for this side of the equation. So basically, the fifth and 10th percentile people, that means 90% of the population is doing pretty good. These people are spending a lot of their income on, on health care, without question. This fifth percentile is spending 45, and that's about 50% of their income, <clears throat> their total retirement income on out-of-pocket expenditures. The 10th percentile is spending about 38% of their total income on out-of-pocket expenditures. Everybody else so is they're you know twenty percent you know less significantly less than twenty percent and I hate to say everybody else but that is I mean that's a fact these are the outliers they go up here these are the outliers so these are the expenditures there's ten percent of the population who's spending a lot of money on healthcare that's all there is to it the rest of us just aren't that's what this shows too the ten percent of the population is spending a lot of money in healthcare. Share of Social Security and total income remaining after out of pocket expenditures and we can see here Social Security is in red. Uh, total income is in uh, is in gray, and here's uh, Medicare Advantage. So if you have Medicare Advantage, 82% of your income is remaining of your total retirement income. If you have Medicare only without the supplements, which don't do that because you have a significant 20% risk of copay um, or coinsurance, whatever it's called, you got 82% of your income is left over as well. For all, it's about 82%. All right, so 82% of your total income is remaining. Uh, for of all for all population, which which is pretty good. That's about eighteen percent per household. Which man, I tell you, that makes that makes sense to me. You got husband wife about eighteen percent. Uh, share of uh, and you can see here, uh, women have a whole, less, not a whole lot less, but less uh, total income remaining after the out of pocket expenditures. I bet women spend more. There's just no other way around that. And also, women are more in pr prone to be in a nursing home. I bet that's exactly what that is uh, for more copays costs. And things like that. Men just die early, earlier, so they don't spend that much or as much as women do. Uh, all right, so let's keep going down. Share of total income remaining out of pocket by health status. All right, so here's a pretty good one. So everybody has 82% of their total income remaining out of uh, after they spend for the out of pocket. If they have no issues, they still have 82% remaining. If they have chronic issues, they have about 78% remaining. If they have two or more of uh, activities of daily uh, limitations essentially uh, they still have pretty I mean that's that's not so bad share of social security and income remaining after medical out-of-pocket expenditures and all I care about is a total remaining income total income not just social security so with two and even chronic uh, issues I mean that's that's still in the 80 percentiles I mean it's 20 percent of your income is going to your health costs but that's for people with two ADLs who need assistance with activities of daily living two plus or chronic conditions uh, income quintiles. Yeah, that's good. So sh I like this one. Share of total income remaining after medical out-of-pocket expenditures. So if you're in the highest quintile, so we've got five quintiles, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, well, actually, including excluding Medicaid. So lowest, okay. So one, two, all right. So we're, we're, this is including Medicaid. So for excluding Medicaid, again, that's that one area that's a little bit nervous racking for me. Not a significant population, mind you, but there is still some issues there. But the highest quintile, the top 20% of income earners for income, uh, household income has you know, about 93%, it looks like, of their income remaining after medical out-of-pocket spending. The third quintile has uh, about 80, 84%. The second has about 80. Is that, is that 20% right there who's got about 78%, 75%, something like that. But the bulk of uh, U.S. households have 80% or more of their income remaining after out-of-pocket expenditures, which is uh, that's good. Uh, medical out-of-pocket spending uh, by two by percentile. Uh, okay, medical out-of-pocket spending 2002 by percentile. I'm not sure what the percent 90 by percentile of what. I'm not sure what that means. Is it the percentile of the income or it's mean? Oh. Okay, so the 90th, okay, I see what they're saying. Yeah, here we go. So the 90th people, the 90th percentile in 2014 spent $8,500. Uh, I don't know if that's average. Okay, but I, get, I guess that's average. So if you're in the 90th percentile of medical out-of-pocket spending, you would have spent about 9,000, 9, 8,500 bucks. 
If you're in the 50th percentile, you spend about $3,900. That's going to be the median right there, about uh, $3,500, eh, $3,900, which makes sense to me. Absolutely. Uh, share of Social Security. I don't care about just share of Social Security income remaining uh, simply because it's, there's more to the story. But the highest percent of spending, the people who spent the most of health care have less share of Social Security remaining, which inherently makes sense. They spend the more. And just going back again, this group of people right here is 10 percent of the expenditures is skewing everything else for the rest of 90. That doesn't mean it's good or bad or other. It doesn't mean that these are bad people or anything. It just shows you if you're not in that 10%, you're in a pretty good place. You're not spending that much on social, on a health out-of-pocket expenditures. You're spending about 4,000 bucks. All right. And so here you can see what have, how much they have left after social security. So some happened in 2002, where these people were spending a lot of money and I, I don't, I don't know what that would be attributed to. That's interesting. That dropped off like a brick from 2002 to 2004. And so these people actually were not, were actually, they, all their social security was going to healthcare out of pocket expenditures. Those people in the 10%. Uh, total share of income remaining after medical, yeah. So even here, the, even the highest percentage, the people who spend the most, the 10 percentile who spend the most, still has 60% of the total income remaining after out of pocket expenditures. So uh, share of social security income remaining uh, by supplemental insurance plans. Yeah, I see Medicare Advantage, Medicaid, Medicare. I, I don't get why they don't have uh, Medigap. I don't. Uh, I need Medigap in there too, so I'm not going to look at that. Uh, total income remaining after medical out-of-pocket spending by gender. Uh, so 2004, <clears throat> this is your total income. Uh, women had in 2004 had about 60, about 75 percent of their total income remaining uh, in 2004. Uh, in 2014, they had about 80 percent. Men had about 82 percent remaining in 2004. And about it looks like about 85 percent in 2014. So we see some some uh, some improvement there for sure, and I very much like to see that share of total income remaining out of by presence or one or more chronic condition. Yeah, we already kind of talked about that. If you have a chronic condition, uh, it will de deplete your assets a little bit, but not much. I mean, here's 2014. Uh, no chronic, well, that's just social security. I don't care. It's just, we want total income, not just social security. Uh, so if you didn't have a chronic condition, uh, you're yeah, a little bit the same, basically pretty close to the same chronic or non-chronic between 2004 and 2014 and improvement in 2014 from 2004 for sure, but just a couple percentage points. We'll take it though. Uh, projected change in the post, uh, out-of-pocket expenses, social security ratio for the average retiree. So the Medicare trustees are projected change. Of the, I don't know if they do for the total income ratio. Uh, see, man. Uh, the, all right. So basically what they're saying is the health care is going to get more and more expensive. So right here in 2014, uh, they were spending about you know, was that 66 percent of their total Social Security is left over after out-of-pocket expenditures. But because medical costs are getting higher, they're expecting your out-of-pocket ex uh, expenses to be more and more of your Social Security benefit, which means you have more, you have less of your Social Security income left over after expenditures. I don't just like the Social Security; it should be for the uh, your total retirement income. But there you go. They're saying, look, we've able to level it off some, but going forward, you're going to lose some of your out-of-pocket expenditures, or your some of your out-of-pocket expenditures are going to eat more and more into your Social Security. For sure to about 62 percent right now we're about 68 percent or so so let's shall see uh by spending types of person medical out-of-pocket expenditures i uh, already talked about that all right well pretty much that thing that's all i want to talk about here uh share of total income remaining and here's the median and we already do that a share of total income remaining after medical spending 2015 all right again health and re retirement study uh, your total income, if you're in the in the median right here, your share of total income remaining was uh, about 90%. So there you go, my friends. That's a pretty good report. That is the uh, from how much does out-of-pocket medical expenses eat away at retirement income? And I think we can pretty much uh, say it's about 12%, uh, 12 to 18%, depending on uh, if you're looking at average or mean or average or median. But uh, that's not... It's just not a significant burden to face for most people. Yes, there is a significant burden for some, but for most, it's just not a huge issue. Not so much that should scare you where you have to just be living in fear. Anyway, hope this helps as always. Four S's, subscribe, share, smash, and, uh, and say your comments down below. I'd love to hear your comments on that. Thought, questions, concerns, post them. We'll see you. Thanks now.